Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our Megasquirt 3 specific firmware and our ignition settings. So we're going to go in and work with the Megasquirt 3 box and we're going to be tuning our ignition timing. We're going to find that we have a bit more features and functions than we did in our Megasquirt 2 firmware or files. We're going to find that we have a more ability to program our coiled well as well as looking at our knock control. Now the knock control is probably going to be the largest thing or the biggest difference you're going to find between Omega Squirt 3 and Omega Squirt 2. Now we're able to wire in a knock sensor to our Omega Squirt 3 and then we're able to take a look at the knock threshold or determine the knock threshold for the engine we're using and we can tell the Omega Squirt what to consider for knock and what not to consider knock and then go in and attack the ignition timing to try to pull some power out and reduce our cylinder temperature and our cylinder pressure by again reducing that timing to try to keep the knock under control. So I'm going to be walking you through all the details you need to know between our Mega Squirt 2 and our Mega Squirt 3 firmware and we're able to go in and properly program your knock control. So without further wait let's jump into this video so we can check it out. Okay so let's get started here we're going to be taking a look at our Megasquirt 3 firmware build and our ignition settings. So in the previous video, we took a look at our uh, firmware build for the Megasquirt 3 and our fuel settings, and we found there was a tremendous amount of difference between our Megasquirt 2 firmware build and our Megasquirt 3. And in fact, I actually have another tuner studio open here. If we jump in here, this is going to be the Megasquirt 2 firmware build. If we jump into fuel settings, we can see there is a lot less things to program compared to if we jump back in here into our Megasquirt 3 firmware build to open up in our tuner studio, we can see that there's a, a, a lot more. So we've covered all that and you know how to work with that. Now in our ignition settings, if we look here, we're going to find the drop down has a lot more uh, settings and things to configure. Again, if we compare it to our Mega Square 2 firmware build here, see it's much less. So we're going to go jump back in here to our Mega Square 3 build and let's talk about some things so we understand what the additional tables here are going to do and why we may want to use them. So under ignition options wheel decoder, we can see if we move into our dwell area here, this is going to be related to our coil dwell. If we go here to our use dwell table option, we jump in here and we go to the on. So we turn it on, go to close here and jump into ignition settings again, jump down in here to the dwell table. Now our dwell table here is going to allow us to vary the dwell versus load and engine RPM. So under normal conditions, if we're running an inductive coil, um, we probably don't need to vary our dwell too much. However, if we're running a race coil, like an IG1 coil uh, that, that you can get from DIY Autotune or several other uh, suppliers, that coil is able to have a tremendous amount of spark energy if we're able to increase the dwell to it. And uh, we went through how to calculate all that in EFI Advanced. So if you're coming in here and you're not sure what coil dwell means exactly, jump back into the EFI Advanced video. It'll explain it very thoroughly and you'll have a better idea how to calculate things to populate a map like this. So this is going to give us uh, a lot of flexibility for a coil that we have the data for, that we can calculate the uh, precise amount of duty cycle and uh, how much how much uh, actual dwell we can get away with to get the maximum spark energy out of the, out of the, uh, the coil. Now if you're running a coil that you don't have a data sheet on um, and you want to experiment a little bit with maybe at the lower RPM points, maybe from 